Alrighty. So, up next, we do have uh, Tom Titan versus Sheik. Um, you know, as you guys should know, Tom Titan is a fairly regular person on the Match Critique streams. Um, pretty decent duck from Georgia. And uh, this case, they're fighting Sheik. Um, got five games in total on here. I forgot what the mat the set count was at the end, but it was a pretty even it was pretty even throughout the entire thing from what I saw. Um, I didn't pay too close attention because like I was just kind of recording it. I wasn't really watching intently, um, so I wasn't exactly I'm not entirely sure what the exact flaw was, um, but it's something I'd have to look at. Yeah, surprisingly, that was a matchup we saw a decent amount of times back in Smash Four. Just because we had Raido, and then we had Void and Mr. R, and he always did get the better of Mr. R. Void, I don't think ever... It's either Raido beat Void once, or he never did. I can't remember what it was. It's like, it either was close, or he never beat him. Always close sets, though. That I do remember. But Smash Ultimate? Yeah, there's... Sheiks don't really exist. I just remembered. Um, Yeah, I don't have to worry about... Uh, I really don't have to worry about the music on this uh, but yeah real quick about this match uh yeah th this is uh kind of not that good of a matchup for Sheik <laughs> to, to, to kind of put it bluntly now um it's not terrible by any means like I'd say like Sheik probably is like slightly losing but it just kind of comes down to the age-old thing that like trades do not work out for Sheik like literally us throwing out one clan or one can is basically the same as one entire combo from her. And if we combo break with clay pigeon and it turns into our combo against her, then basically like that equals four sheet combos and we'll kill her at like 60 or 80%. So she dies extremely early. Of course, main saving grace on her part is that she can get to ledge fairly safely. There's not too much we can do to intercept with that outside of like some jank with like gunmen and like can placements at least for bouncing fish but you know um the the, the teleport's gonna work just fine to ledge but getting off from the ledge against duck hunt as she can be a bit tricky because because of shield can and um you know if she decides to do jump and then bouncing fish we can still like completely outrange her with up air so that does make it a little bit hard Yeah, 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 no, it's once Rido, once Rido, like, started, once I started flying Rido everywhere, that's, that's really when, um, you saw that matchup a lot more, just because Sheik was a common character, in this game, she's obviously not that common, so yeah, you could control her pretty well in the air with Can, uh, mostly because, like, um, needles only go horizontal, so that, that honestly helps out quite a bit, um, Gunman, you can use to just stop bouncing fish in general, um, so if you do Gunman, she just cannot bouncing fish you, um, the one buff that she gained from, um, ultimate to, uh, smash Four to ultimate was the grenades is definitely better at edge guarding us now. Um, but however, as long as you're good with like your air dodge timings and all that stuff, it shouldn't be too much. And not to mention it might like boost your momentum a little bit too. So, um, even then it's like kind of a double edged sword on that front. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, let's see what happened overall. I do know Tom was able to take some games. And this is the other thing too. You do want to go to these longer stages against Sheik because it's more important for you to set up than it is for her to set up. Um, I will say this. If a Sheik is more focused on sitting back and camping in this matchup, they're playing the matchup wrong. Uh, while they might feel more comfortable doing this, not smothering Duck Hunt is probably the worst thing you can do. Because if we have time to set up, that means we're basically guaranteed to get a trade in our favor. Um, and a Sheik, you kind of want to prevent that from happening. Because, you know... Um, Despite like the percentages never really working out in your favor, Sheik, you can still edge guard Duck Hunt decently well. Um, so that's the thing. You want to focus on him not being able to set up and doing that. And the other thing too is if you're not perfect with your combos at Sheik, we can always combo break as Duck Hunt with either the Can Trade or the Clay Pigeon Trade. Um, I haven't really labbed out exactly when you'd want to do Clay Pigeon Trades. Can Trades are kind of self-explanatory. It's like if the damage and positioning is better for you, you do that. So let's say Sheik is at like 120% and you're at like... 80 or something like that you're gonna go for the can trade because she's just automatically gonna die <laughs> things like that one of the best this is uh, one of the best duck on stages too and that that makes it honestly a lot better for him um yeah and honestly with Sheik being so light she's still gonna die off the top fairly early Yeah, unfortunately, it was a little bit too early on that clay pen de detonation. But I don't think he could have done it sooner. Yeah. 
Yeah, but like right now, immediately, if you look at the percentages, you might feel like Sheik's hit Duck Hunt more, but like just off of like those two open before that clay pigeon hit, like it, we were basically like uh, like fifty percent more percentage on Sheik already, and that's just kind of like the story of the matchup. Um, yeah. <laughs> And that's the other thing too, by having like the aerial gunman here, that very like that that's gonna severely like cut off like the things that she's gonna be able to do with bouncing fish and even needles to an extent as well. So not a bad idea to have gunmen in the air just kind of as like a wall. It's like there if you placed a gunman, um that would block the that would block the bouncing fish, and you might be able to jump and fair her as well. But it depends how she DIs after that. I think you guys just saw what I saw. I think you guys just saw what I saw. Do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna do you wanna grace this beauty? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh, that move sucks so much. <laughs> you just invalidate a smash attack with down tilt. I've honestly never like taken a close look at um, how those hitboxes work exactly, but let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, let's see why this happens. Oh, that is never hitting duck cut down tilt. Look at this. So first of all, down tilt's gonna go below this, so that that's already missing. That's definitely gonna miss no matter what. So funny enough. If you wanted to completely counter this, you could do down smash as duck hunt and this F smash will miss and you'll just catch her. That's so funny. That's so funny. That's a sad move. Down smash, at least that looks that looks pretty good. But F smash? Dang, that's that's a tragedy. That's actually a tragedy of a move. <laughs> at least for this matchup. Yeah, so I don't want to see any of you duck hunts die to F Sheik F Smash now. <laughs> okay, at least that one made sense. <laughs> also, I have to know that F Smash does like... Oh, wait, he was at low percentages. And not bad, but it's like he's not right now. He's not exactly thinking of like the best um, outcomes to get. That was way too greedy. <laughs> way, 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 way too greedy. Not sure what that up smash was. Yeah, so like in a situation like this, you need to reset your can. This is going to do you no favors, especially when she's over here. So you just ping it off. It's got a lot of gravity on it. So like two, uh, I'd say like three pings, it'll just fall off and reset immediately. Yeah, detail's amazing. Because, like, not only do you, like, low-profile things, so grabs a whiff, but it'll also push you back um, back enough that a lot of uh, attacks will also whiff as well. It's a really good move. Oh, man, that almost comboed. Yeah, so you could... Look how active that entire thing... I th Well, I guess that was technically the can that hit. Let me see. Cause I think she got hit by the down air as well. That was almost cool. He had the right idea with that. Yeah, like you always just kind of wait for the rapid jab finisher to go. Or you just roll right through it, which you could have done. Oh, god, that was really bad. Yeah, the good thing about that Sheik player is, like, they did DI away from Clay Pigeon, so, like, the only thing he could have realistically gotten is, like, a back air there. Like, just like that. See, like, right now, like, kind of one mistake that Tom's making is, like, he's just trying to approach Sheik when he really doesn't have to. That was just bad execution there. And he's not really focusing on setting up. And, like, when you're fighting Sheik naked... <laughs> there we go. There's the down tilt against the, the F smash. That, he was not thinking about the explosion. 
you had to take that into consideration. You probably thought that um, it was going to auto snap there, but you got to remember they they can go for the attack very easily. But yeah, like when you're fighting Sheik, you really need to focus way more. Well, that actually hit. You need to focus way more on the setup. Again, not resetting the can there. Just kind of cost him like extra time to get him a setup there. Okay, yeah, so Sheik was able to break the clay pigeon there. That's why it stopped Tom. Wow, he was able to break the clay pigeon again. He waited a little bit too long on that attempt there, but, you know, it wasn't a bad idea. That was very confusing. I'm not sure if he meant to actually go for that gunman there, but if he did, yeah, like... Um, at ledge, gun, as I always say, gunman's not what you want to use at the ledge. You always want to use either can, or you're just going to be jumping around with fair once they grab the ledge. Honestly, like, when you start seeing your opponent go for uh, the rapid jabs, you can just smash attack behind them. Like, in this case, I would have done down smash since he was closer to the left ledge. Or you could just charge up smash. Both of those would have worked fine. No, he had an up air guaranteed. Always know your clay pigeon combos. There we go. At least we cleaned it out. Yeah, overall from that first game, um, a lot of sloppy execution in terms of the neutral. Uh, basically, the big thing was just like bad can placements, not resetting can. Um... Clay Pigeon, like, I, I feel like the combos off of that were more of a Wi-Fi thing. But some of them, like, especially that last one, like, that should have been a kill. There, there was no reason why for that one not to be a kill there. Um, and some of the execution things, look, it looks more Wi-Fi rather than, like, the actual choice that he wanted to make. Um, still some issues with the ledge traps and all that stuff. Way too greedy um, with the edge guarding, but we'll see what happens in the second game. Yeah, kind of some nonsensical um, attack placements at the moment. Um, a lot of things, like even if you're trying to cover a future spot, it's not even a spot that could be covered by anything. See, like that was a good jumping placement, but just uh, unfortunately a slow reaction there. Again, if you see somebody doing like rapid jabs in the wrong direction, you can go for a stronger punish than just jabs. He keeps running into these S smashes. Really lucky that he just got on that platform there. Oh, Zach Grenades can eat him. <laughs> I've actually never seen there just throw in the wrong way. Yeah, you try to cover a forward approach with that. Overall, like, at least one thing that Tom's doing decently well, at least so far this game, is he's playing decently safe. Like, I can't accept that. That was bad. <laughs> For the most part, uh, he's just kind of playing at a safe distance where he's able to, like, kind of, like, properly react to things. If um, the Sheik decides to approach him. That was definitely misinput. Again there, like, that was, like, he tried to do a weight bounce, which that would have at least kept him safe, but that was definitely Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'm not sure if that, that F smash was intentional either. Ooh, yeah, didn't hold shield long enough. That's the other thing, too. You can't actually hit the grenade before um, it starts the explosion thing with can. So it'd be pretty easy to, like, kind of get around. So just kind of a confusing sequence there. It's like he was trying to catch the jumps and all that stuff. But, like, honestly, after that second smash attack, could very easily punish that with a fair. And just rolled right into Sheik. Like, whenever a grenade's at ledge, you just got to be patient. And then, like, just choose the option that she doesn't have covered. Which, uh, standard getup, she didn't really have covered. Like, she's not going to kill you off a of grab. So you really don't got to worry about that. And then off a jump, she technically can kill you, um, but it's still going to be a little bit harder for her. Like, you should be able to react with like an air dodge um, to whatever her option would be. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm kind of surprised that like, I guess she got a strong nair there. Oh, he got so lucky he didn't fastball there. If he did, that up smash actually would have killed him. But yeah, the other thing, too, like, that I'm noticing a lot... Ah, I see, I see. 
Yeah, because like one thing that I'm noticing a lot is like um, you're not trying to just like play it cool on the on the ledge. Like you're always trying to cover like things very very aggressively. Where if you play a little bit more passively at the ledge, you'll be able to get a lot more percentage and stocks off of it. Yeah, again, like you you keep falling for all these roll setups that the sheet keeps doing. Yeah, always make sure you DI Sheik throws away. Because um, if you don't, then sh um, she might be able to like convert into a stock. Yeah, you did need one more clay pigeon after that. Really good save on that can there. So I'm not going to say that was a bad idea. Like that, that would have technically covered a jump there. Not really angry at that. It's just that, you know, you didn't cover the most amount of options you could have with that maneuver. It was just a very hard call. Yeah, see like this is fine. Like you're covering all you're covering a lot by doing the up smashes there because you have the can there. So like that that's good utilization of smash attacks. Oof, yeah. Now, unfortunately, the Clay Pigeon hurt box starts behind you, so that's why that blew up. Yeah, it actually could have killed you with up smash. <laughs> Yeah, for things like down smash, that's the reason why I say if you learn how to use standing pivot grab, it'll help you so much in terms of just being able to punish things you normally wouldn't be able to. Yeah, down smash is actually a pretty good attack to use against Sheik, just because, like, um, Sheik's going to be using, like, aerials a lot against you. And with down smash, like, putting you at such a low profile, it's actually going to be very hard for her to, like, get a good punish on you. Like, as we just saw, if she does F smash, your down smash will probably low profile you under that second hit of F smash. <laughs> So, like, that won't even hit you. Again, like, you could have focused on having, like, a can out. Like, that clay pigeon was so high committal, and that might be the reason why you die now. Again, you keep doing the same exact thing. Every single time, um... Every single time uh, the Sheik players doing the grenades are always rolling in. They, they were calling it out with down smash all the time before, but they've stopped. But you you haven't stopped doing it. You've been getting punished throughout the entire game, and you're still choosing to do it. And that was just a call on their part. So yeah, you really need to keep that in mind. Like uh, rolling from ledge is your habit when you feel like you're going to get hit by something. It doesn't even have to be like that you're going to die. It's just if you're going to get hit, you're rolling from ledge. So keep that in mind. It's a very exploitable habit to have. And I know that's not really a lag thing. Like, that's just that's just a habit thing. At least in the scenarios it was happening in. Yeah, that's really good right there. Um, like, oh... Perfect example of can control right there and approaching with can from above. So what you saw right there, um, for everybody that complains about the Belmont and Min Min and things like that, that that's how you do those matchups. You have the can approach from the top above like their whips, their crosses, their punches and all that stuff. And then as you slowly approach with Duck Hunt or you just shield and you take the hits while the can's rubbing, uh, coming from above, that's how you pressure them, and that's how you get, like, cannon to play at first. That's exactly what you want to do. And then even against, like, other characters, like Brawlers and all that stuff, that's exactly what you want to do to create, like, a really dynamic, like, pressure system, and how you feel comfortable placing can against them based on their play style, like, will greatly vary that. Like, sometimes you try to get the can front, sometimes on top, and sometimes behind them. So you have to figure out what exactly you're trying to control with it, with that, and what you're trying to get off of it. That, yeah, that was really good. That's... It's exactly what I want to show off to people. <laughs> yeah, see, that was a really good time to do the combo break with Clay, uh, Clay Pigeon. Um, the only thing is, like, the issue is that because you did Nair, the, it, the hitbox isn't long enough that it was able to hit them on time before they could combo break. 
Um, but yeah, if you did it properly, then yeah, um, you would have been able to get that. Or maybe if you detonate a little bit later. Ooh, good conversion there. Ah, uh, that was unfortunately you got orange coat. <laughs> because the other ones would have been fine. <laughs> so yeah, one thing about bad can placements. This is bad can placement because like right now this is not gonna really cover anything, and the only thing you could really do is like shoot it off. Like the the most you could po theoretically do with this is just like. Down tilt the opponent to get them into that or get a grab and hopefully somewhere over here so you could throw them into it. But like anywhere across the stage, like you're you're not hitting them to this can. Um, so like if you ever have a can in a situation like this, I'd probably just like ping it off. Even if it was on the platform. If it was on the platform, then you have way more room to like go be like over here and still throw them into the can for a combo. But on the ground like that, that's kind of out of play at the moment. Oh, good catch. Yeah, like, if you get, like, the false thing, like, just be ready to intercept them coming in. Good attempt at a shield can set up, but, um, you know, Sheik was just fast enough. Aw. I think I saw, like, an air dodge or something. Funny thing is, if he kept spamming down tilt in place, they probably would have a very hard time hitting you. <laughs> yeah, good combo break there. That's too bad. If you're a little bit more attentive, you would have been able to punish that down smash. But you know that that's kind of hard to react to, especially on Wi-Fi. <laughs> Yeah, no, right now you're doing what you need to do. You're playing around can very safely, so that way you're getting all the trades. And then you're 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 calling out their jump-ins very, very well. Like, you're spacing properly with fair, except for that time. And whatever I say, it's commentator's curse. It, it just follows you everywhere. You're a little bit late on the reaction. Get a punish there. A little late on that detonation as well. That's so funny you actually came out of that one fight. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> and you got a weird hit on that one. Let me, let me check that real quick. Interesting. Huh. Oh, really good parry there. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, like, um, in that one, you just went for the hard read there. But if you were ready, you could have just up aired or back aired that. Back air probably would have killed them. But, yeah. Oh, well, what the... That was... That was weird. What was that? Okay. Okay, perfect use of down tilt there. Yeah, so um, you have to remember, like, once you intercept them with, like, the... Um, once you do, like, the Bouncing Fish Interception, there's not really too much she can do. I forget how much end lag they have after after they do the Bouncing Fish. Let me see. So... So after the second hit, the end lag is 79. But yeah, if you look at this hitbox here. So after they bounce off the first one, you can just jump up from behind them and just hit Sheik. 
So you don't really have to be too worried about that. So just try to aim for the torso, or you can even trade with the legs and you'll be okay. Especially at this percentage. Gotcha. Yeah, like there, all you had to do is ping the cannon, she was probably dead. <laughs> and yeah, now you're doing really bad can spawns because of needles. Yeah, see, like now you're not keeping needles in mind, and that's what the Sheik player is starting to do. They're adapting to the fact that they can automatically blow you up like that. If you run into can, like the second needles come then it's it's a very easy punish for Sheik to get. All right, good call out with that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, overall off those first two games, like, by the end, like, the, the last part was just bad just because, um, you know, you didn't keep needles blowing up can immediately in mind. But, yeah, no, that was, that was a good, that was a decent example of what to do against Sheik. It's just, like, at the, at the end, it was sort of falling apart. Also, this is a very good stage for the matchup, too, just because it's very big and long. Also, I would say the wall helps us more than it hurts. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're able to spam a little bit too much after that. So yeah, you have to remember, um, when you get those low percent uh, clay pigeon combos, when you detonate it, you want to be jumping in the air already, so that way you do landing fair and you can get that second fair. Like, at that percentage, you can always get a double fair on uh, clay pigeon. Uh, yeah, 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 no, that, that's something that she can do. But the thing is, it's like, with Cheek to do that, you do have to deal with Can still, and you still do have to deal with um, Gunman as well. So, I feel like that's not really as beneficial to her overall. Um, just because you, like, you can just kind of block those things. Like, the grenade's just kind of a better thing to go with overall against Duck Hunt. It's just a lot safer. It kills really early if you get it. You can cover other options too. Yeah, see, like, at that... At that, at this can distance, this can's useless. You never throw to that. This one, you would just like ping the can off while you have them grab, and then toss her off stage. Yeah, that was a really greedy up smash. Yeah, again, you're not keeping needles in mind. She is actually abusing that. That was a good can combo. Oh man, if you got the ping in there, then it would have worked out pretty well. Again, not keeping needles in mind. You need to make sure you're at least jumping with them. Yeah, if you had the stronger gun, that would have killed. Now, can set up. There we go. Oh, yeah, you had to get the second hit. <laughs> yeah, at this point, you got to be very careful about a can trade, because, like, that's going to probably kill you, too. Dad. Oh, you have to remember, down tilt's the secret. Down tilt's always going to be the secret weapon. So at this point, you can just go for a can aside and kill her. Which is probably what I would do. But that works too. <laughs> so, like, actually, that's the one thing I should mention is, like, if you, um... If you want to just go for, like, the can aside killed, because, like, there's basically no issue against you, against them, like... Uh, for you doing it just play aggressive against them and then once they like kind of like start to get a combo on you you just press b the second that it's not a true combo oh, a little bit too early on that can ping would have been a hot combo though 
That's very bad. You're just you're holding in as you're recovering. That's really easy to cover. I think about holding in while recovering is the doing the same thing as rolling in while recovering. That's basically what it is. Because holding in while recovering is the number one noob habit that like everybody looks out for. Once they understand what it is. Oh, very risky. Yeah, I think that your campings actually prevented the grenade from going down a little bit earlier. That was good, but yeah. Yeah, honestly, like, the, that, that, that last struggle situation was kind of bad. Like, if you thought that it would kill her, then I understand why you went for it. But at that percentage, it was, Sheik was still too low. Yeah, it's like, right now, you're not trying to really go for the... Um, the setup is as much as you were as you were before. Um, the other thing too is like you're not really trying to use gunmen effectively to like help deal with needles and like to kind of just stop bouncing fish in general. Like it doesn't even think it doesn't even seem like you're really considering that as part of your game plan. That's kind of a mistake. Also, your parries on Sheik are pretty good, so you can you can honestly start developing a game plan around using your parries around Sheik. Ooh, perfect. It's a little. A little disappointing on the execution at the end there, but it's kind of understandable. It's kind of a one of those, like, weird limbo percents. Yeah, I wish you were a little bit more confident in that can hitting. So you, had a, you could have had a really fun combo after that. Ooh, bad miss input. That was so ballsy of you. You just F tilted right into her um, her F smash. <laughs> I imagine that wasn't intentional. But yeah, as you can see, dude, it's that thing lasts forever if you down air the can. But yeah, at least you got you got a good call out on that. Um, I I don't really against Sheik. I really don't recommend doing that type of edge guard where you go off stage and down air the can. As she's not really a character that should be getting hit by that, but she just happened to be there at the wrong time. But yeah, overall, you're still not keeping needles in mind. Um, you should be utilizing them in a lot more to deal with needles and just like kind of to help you spawn can safer as well. It'll it'll go a long way for that. So I, uh, that's kind of two things that I really want to see. Three, two, also, the recoveries could definitely use some work too. Not your low recoveries, more more so your high recoveries. Your high recoveries are um, a little lacking. Yeah, remember to DI out from sheet combos too, so that way you can like make them end quicker as well. Yeah, see like right there you could have easily had a gunman set up, so that way you could have stopped like all that needle pressure from happening. Yeah, it's like a greedy thing. Honestly, like at 139, your short hop up air probably would have killed Sheik. Like, you have to remember, Sheik is very light. You can kill her ridiculously early um, with um, vertical killing moves. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, you know, you don't have you don't have to make it hard on yourself with like things like the up smash read. Also remember, at low percents, like your forward throw combos are true. You don't have to just like toss them in gunmen. Oh yeah, that was that was th that was three up airs that were true. Oof, yeah. That's the other thing too. It's like um, you have to remember that like Sheik is never going to kill you off a throw, and by you just like desperately going for an attack at all times is always gonna make it's gonna make it like that's gonna be the only way that you're actually gonna die. If you hold shield at ledge, like she basically has no chance to kill you. So just take the throw. As the saying goes. <laughs> that's so greedy too. Like you're not even like trying to go for a ledge setup or anything. Like 
You're playing so dangerous for like zero reason, like for zero like need to do it. Again, you're doing the whole um, holding in while recovering. Very easy habit to exploit as long as you know it's there. The other thing too is like this entire time you could have gotten a can out to like help assist your recovery, but you haven't done that. Like you haven't thrown out any projectiles at all. Or like a gunman to like help intercept some of these things. Like there, you could have just placed a gunman, that would have stopped the needles, and if she decided to bouncing fish, the gunman would have also stopped with that. But like you just keep trying to go in over and over again with having nothing with you that's safe. Like you're just trying to press attacks against like projectiles. It, it's never gonna work. That was a little unfortunate, but yeah. Uh, you know. Do you get like I always feel like I do feel like this is a pretty consistent issue with you, Tom. Um I always feel like you're you're always you you kind of guess wrong on your distance on what distances you can throw to can. Um so definitely I would say you need to like understand the distances a little bit better. Like if you grab her at like twenty or something percent and it's she's over here. Um, back throw is not going to link to can like should have to be at like 60 or 70 and then you can ping it by uh, doing the back throw over here. So just say get used to the distances more and just remember like sometimes it's going to be significantly better for you to throw her off stage. Like throwing your opponent off stage basically guarantees that you're going to be able to get more damage from a ledge trap or a guaranteed kill. And throwing to the can will sometimes lead to like more damage and all that stuff. But most of the time like you're only really throwing to can if it's already... If she's, like, at 0%, then, like, yeah, sure, that might be better. Um, or if it's, like, you can't really get her off stage. Those are the main times that you're doing it. Yeah, again, see, like, you're just, like, kind of holding in again. Rolling in too. Yeah, shield can. <laughs> oh, they definitely screwed up right there. Yeah, see, so you always gotta just remember like what are the positions that are gonna get you killed. So being above Sheik is one of them, so you always kind of wanna be off stage here. And then you air dodge around here, so then that way if they bouncing fish, you'll avoid it. Um, or if they do like needles. Um, but generally, you should be doing jumping needles to bouncing fish or something like that. Um, but yeah, now overall, like what ended up happening here is you stopped playing anti sheet game and that's how you like lost a lot of ground and that's how you lost your lead. Yeah, that's the thing. Like a hit or miss is still a coin toss. Like you're basically going to the casino by doing this. <laughs> So like, you know, you um like the biggest thing is like you do need to like kind of like calm down and relax a little bit, like stop pressing all these buttons. And the other thing too is just like know that like get especially against Sheik when she's gonna be a lot more campy, like just getting your projectiles out to assist you, whether you're getting it off stage as you're recovering or as you just recover, to just like kind of like help kind of keep them at bay is gonna be for the benefit of you. Or if like let's say they're in burst range, just kind of sit back and wait, wait for them to come to you and then use your option to get around them. Cause if you commit then that gives them full frame advantage to respond to what you're going to do. And as Sheik, they're always going to have the frame data and the speed to respond to you. Like if you pull a can and like she's like right over here, she'll be able to run over it, grab you or run over, run under um, F tilt or something like that. Um, and if you go for jump there, she can respond to that very easily as well. Um, so you do need to be very, very careful about how you're kind of approaching that whole situation. So ideally try to get a can out, at least as you're recovering. If you know she's sitting back and charging needles, then you can get like a gunman out. So that way you build a safe zone and all that stuff. So she can't technically needle past this area. So that gives you, um, free reign to basically get a free can out. Um, also be aware of, uh, needles messing with your can. That was just something you, it basically seemed like you didn't pick up on. It's like either the cheek was doing it or she wasn't. It's mostly what it came down to. Um, you know, uh, definitely like focus on ledge trapping more, um, uh, whether you're just doing, if you're just going for the edge guards for the fun of it, that, that's a different story. Like, you know, have fun. This is online. Do whatever you want. But, you know, if you are trying to be more consistent with it, definitely focus on doing ledge traps more, especially against Sheik. It's just overall, it's just going to end up better for you that way. Um, 
definitely stop like if, you, if the sheik is throwing out smash attacks they're they're kind of like throwing the game because their smash attacks aren't really good so if you see them doing that a lot just kind of wait for those and then punish them as they come um like the sheik this sheik was doing enough smash attacks that you definitely could have waited for that like you kind of just ran into most of those f smashes like i feel like there's only one good f smash that the sheik did and that was to cover your role and then after that they were all kind of bad um, obviously that up smash the, the up smash usage wasn't too bad down smash is one you can sort of throw out a bit more but it never really felt like they threw out the down smash in good spots the only time the down smashes were good is when they used um grenade to make you roll and they down smashed your roll uh, but outside of that um their smash attack usage was actually really 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 bad um so you know pick up on player habits more because the honest this player did have a lot of habits and i don't feel like you really exploited them much um, especially like them jumping from ledge. I always felt like you're trying to cover the ground more than you're trying to cover the air. And the Sheik was jumping a lot from the ledge too. So that's, I feel like picking up on the player's habits was, is probably the biggest takeaway from this. And of course your own, um, as I mentioned, you, every single time they did a grenade at ledge, you kind of roll, you always found some point you would roll in, uh, when recovering, uh, most of the time, if you're recovering high, you always kept held it, like pushing far in as much as you could. Um, uh, that's like, that's beginner 101 beginner slayer 101 is you always look out for that from ledge so you know please be conscious of yourself doing that and just making sure if you do recover high you're doing it smartly um and then um yeah also being more aware of when you cannot throw it a can and when it's better for you to throw your opponent off stage if you cannot throw it a can like just recognize the distance first because um that's something that it just it just doesn't seem like you fully understand the distance for that yet um uh, always throw them off stage that's just always going to be the best solution for you and be more conscious about resetting your can if it's in his position that you can't take advantage of i felt like a lot over the course of the five games the can was just like off in the corner over here and there was like no ch real chance of you being able to convert off that can so you just need to be ready to just like reset it on a whim's notice so keep those things in mind uh, any questions from you, though? Anything specific? All right, perfect. 